Hey everybody, welcome back. So I'm gonna do a uh, brake flush here on my new, new to me X166. It's a 2016 GL450 or Matic. So I figured I'd do a, I need, one of the things that I need to do on it is a brake flush. So I figured I'd show you that. Um, I was gonna do this video on a, a S65, a W221, but buddy was kind of waiting here with me while I did it so I didn't want to take up his time making a video but here I'll do a brake flush um, see here it's kind of dark figure I get it done um, so you just you know this cover just lifts out it's just got three tabs nothing holding it on the bottom so once you pull this seal away it comes right out let me get the brake later. So what I'm using here is this guy here. This is a, a brake bleeder that some buddies of mine had at a, a dealership that we used for years, so I trusted it. And I figured I'd uh, get my own. So I was just kind of use theirs or what uh, the shop had. So just take your little gauge there. You have to buy this little separate adapter that just screws on there and this guy goes right on there and then you twist this big top off and put brake fluid in there but I've already got brake fluid in there and I'm just using the Mercedes-Benz uh, dealership stuff so basically what you would do is you turn this and just pump that like a bug sprayer until it's at the uh, pressure you want. And then you look right here, you want to put the equivalent of two bar in here. So I believe that's uh, just under 30 PSI. I may be wrong, but I believe each bar is about 14 PSI. So it's about twenty. So I verified uh, that's supposed to be about twenty nine psi. So you just push that down and lock it in. And you can see here it's just around thirty psi. So once you got that there, you um, can start cracking the bleeders open. So for me, usually I can reach down in here and uh, get my hand. You can see the silhouette of the bleeder right there, the focus. So I'll just pop that little cap off and just crack it loose with this guy here. Usually keep this thing hook right here so this thing usually comes with something like this it has a magnet on it so that it can uh, hang out somewhere but I usually use the hook and so this is designed to perfectly fit over a bleed screw and then once that's on there, you can break it loose and the pressure will just force it out. All right, so I'm going to start on the right rear wheel because that's where you start, where you always want to start. And so you can see through the rim here, this is the caliper. And right in there, that is the bleeder with the hose going on it. So you would take this little guy off of there and then you put that hose on there. It's probably a lot easier if you take the wheel off, but I really don't want to do that. And so make sure that your little cup there is sitting up, ready to go. And then you can just reach around, put your wrench on there, and you just crack it loose. turn a little bit so that it comes out 
Alright. Go. Start feeling your uh, filling your cup there. Going pretty quick. Here's what I do is let this thing fill up about a quarter until the you see how orange this is? Once this starts coming out clear, you don't see like orange or amber. And you know you've gotten to the point where you don't need to. This is actually the wheel you should probably spend the most time bleeding. But see how dark that is. That's pretty bad. So I'm gonna let this go for a while. Um, this cup is actually not super big. The one that used to, the dealer was much bigger. So I might actually uh, fill this thing most of the way or halfway up to get uh, as much as I can out. It's okay if you have to empty this thing like once or twice in the middle of this, but uh, it's going pretty quick. So you see it's getting pretty full. You can tell that this uh, color up here is already uh, considerably lighter. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna turn this off and empty that. Twist the hose there. See if I can focus this. It likes to focus on the rim. There we go. That'll just take my wrench. Snug it up just a tiny bit so that I can safely get the hose off. I don't want any air going in my line. Just a little snug. And then I'll pop this off. you can do is you just lift the hose up and it'll drain all in there and then you can go dump it so I just emptied my bottle it's a good opportunity to check the gauge so you see it's dropped a little bit you can probably just leave it um, simple enough to just add a few more pumps and then we're ready to go again Come on back, push that over the, uh, like I said, it'll be easier with the um, wheel off, but I'm lazy and I just want to get it done. I don't feel like taking these huge tires off. that's farthest away from the master cylinder. So the line's gonna be the longest. So the order that Mercedes always wants us to do it in is right rear, left rear, right front, and left front. That makes it a lot uh, more efficient so that you don't get any air and you get it all effectively. Pretty clear. So it's looking pretty good to me. Um, it does have like a slight yellow tinge to it typically. So I'm gonna say that's pretty good. Move on to the next wheel. Get my wrench. Gotta say, this is probably my first one handed brake job. There's brake fluid running down the rim. You probably hit that with some brake cleaner, maybe the nozzle, wipe it with a rag. So let's get that. Like this non chlorinated brake parts cleaner. Just stick that in there. You 
want it to sit there because it degrades paint pretty efficiently. Make sure you get all every drop if you can. And then it's like an alcohol, so it'll it'll uh, dry on its own. But I still like to kind of wipe it with a rag. And then you just uh, grab your little boot, your little cover. Go back on under there. It just pushes on like that. And then never hurts to double check how tight it is. Good. Next wheel. So, next one in the pattern. Both rear wheels starting with the right. I'll do the exact same thing. So, on the right rear, left, or left rear wheel here. See, it's coming out pretty much clear now. Go ahead and disconnect it. So, now that we're on the right front wheel, it actually, um, we can turn these wheels so that actually makes it easier. So, the caliper's on the back side of the wheel. So, we're going to turn the wheels left here and we should get uh, more access to reach around. So, now we can, I like the wheel turned, we can kind of see back here. So, we can see the caliper. There's the bleed screw. Oh, let me just reach back here. Did I get my arm back here? Just pop that off without losing it. There's your bleeder. Once again, you get your hose. Hopefully it's long enough. <clears throat> Looks like it's gonna be. So we just pop that on there. See, that'll just sit down there. And go ahead and put this. All these bleed screws are 11 millimeter. Just let that run a little bit, fold the hose on itself. See how orange that is. You can actually just watch it in real time, kind of get it lighter and lighter. See, this would be my second time emptying it. It'll probably be the last time I need. So I'll empty this and I'll keep draining this same one. Everything's good as long as we still got pressure, pressure coming out of the bleeder. And we close this before taking the hose off and we won't have any air getting in there. Put that drain back in there. Pick this up. And go dump it in the... Uh, I'm just dumping this into my oil pan there. Take our wrench and do it again. That's tightening. And pull it towards me. And then we'll just back that off a little bit. Make the hose so it lets the bleed screw stay open. See it's already filling up. You can hear it. This is really going to be what you can do for pretty much every car that doesn't have um, an SBC unit, which is most Mercedes-Benz vehicles don't. The early W211s had it. I think some SLs had it. And you need a scanner to actuate the solenoids and the valves inside the brake controller. But as long as you go up in here 
and you look around down in here, and you look around down in here, and you want to find your unit that looks like this. Usually there will be uh, the metal cover will extend, it'll say SBC, like really obviously in big letters right across it. So um, if you're unsure, you can just look at the ABS unit and even, you know, the sticker in it. If it says SBC, you know, you need a computer. If it doesn't, you're good to go. So that's pretty clear. Filling up dark, but the hose itself is looking pretty good. So I'm gonna go ahead and close that off. Probably do another brake flush within by the end of the year again, even though you only have to do this every 20,000 miles or two years. I just uh, this car looks like it hasn't been, been done in a while, so I'm going to do it sooner than it should, just to, for its benefit. Alright, any residue you see there, you can just kind of spray off with brake cleaner or wipe off with a, a rag of some kind. So we're trucking right along here. Now we can turn the wheels back the other way. Double check our pressure, getting a little low. Might a little faster if we top it off. I mean, you really, I don't think you need to do this because it comes out quick enough, but it can't hurt. Just make sure you're still holding up pretty high there. So I'm gonna turn the wheels to the right now and we'll finish off the last wheel. All right, so farther you turn it, the better, of course, more axis. We're just gonna get in there and do the exact same thing we did on the other side to this side. So here we are on the left front. Pump off our little rubber cover. Set that aside. Take our hose again. This lead screw. I don't need to push this, so I get some more leverage. Alright. Now if your bleed screws don't come loose, you know it's not wise to crank on them. Because you could break them, break them off. And you could either do it to where it won't stop leaking or where you won't be able to get it off at all and then you gotta drill it out or replace the caliper or whatever. But, um, yeah, you just want to be gentle. Sometimes it helps to just kind of tension the other way and then try and break it loose or spray this with some penetrating fluid. So, I'm just backing that off there just a little bit. Let that go up. Inspect other stuff while you're in here. You can see it's already pretty clear uh, fluid uh, because this is the shortest line. You can see how close the master cylinder and the ABS unit are to each other. Um, and you can see how close this is to that wheel. So very little fluid that needs to um, be drained out. So this is probably going to be the one that you need to spend the least amount of time on. Then we'll go ahead and just tighten that back up. Make sure we're not too tight. Nice and snug. Back there. It's a little residue as long as it's not like dripping down the car. 
We have a bar area. I'm just gonna let the pressure out of my bleeder here. Okay. Next step, you can, uh, helps to put a rag around there before you lift that off, just in case it cuts off any extra pressure. And then you can just screw this guy off. There you go, I'll screw that off, put that to the side. You can look in here, it's fully clear now. It's probably not perfect, but I'm probably gonna do it again, like I said, within the year. Um, you can also, like I said, get a like a turkey baster, suck all that out, dump it, and then fill it up. All right, so I got the brake bleeder put away. That was actually the um, ATD 5125 brake bleeder. Works well. We used it at the Mercedes dealer. Multiple guys had it. This is the thing I was talking about. I kind of, I got this from Harbor Freight. You just squeeze the diaphragm and suck fluid out. Put a little cap on there so it stays sealed and stuff. Uh, yeah, I modified it with the zip tie just so this thing wouldn't um, detach. Works, I've uh, been working great for years. So I just take that little guy off there. And you take that out, set that aside. Try bring this closer. And basically what you can do is you can fully compress that and just go like that. Just suck as much fluid as you like out of there. I was just gonna suck some more out of there just to get the stuff at the bottom. And then you can come over and just dump it. Just use something like that. And it works well. I just do this because you can see the stuff at the bottom is pretty brown. So I try and suck stuff like that out with this with the, the brake bleeder probably really won't get. So it's good to try and you know, kind of loosen that stuff up and get it out of there. If you can. I mean, otherwise, it's really such a small amount, it's probably really not going to cause any problems. If you uh, clean this guy too, you see he's got kind of a tint to it. If you just kind of wipe it off inside and out, you can get a little cleaner. So you can see that's much better. It looks brand new. You can see that's the spot I used to uh, kind of wipe in there with my finger like that. So uh, this is the same one. You see it's still a little bit dirty, but you put that back in there. And when you pour your fluid in there, you pour it through that. Just uh, make sure any fine materials don't get into the fluid itself. So let me get a new bottle. This is what I've been using. Brand new Mercedes-Benz brake fluid, dot four plus. This is what we put in all the cars at the dealership. Just puncture that new seal. You don't want to use one that's already been opened. It's a bad idea, so I'll set that there for a moment. Just kind of spread this around there just to catch because brake fluid you definitely don't want going anywhere it's not supposed to be. Yes, you can use a funnel, but so now I've got that topped off. You can really check the level of the flashlight's usually the trick. You can kind of come here. I like to put it like right here. And you shake it, and you see where the level is. So it's right at max from what I can see. So that's perfect. Take our cap, put it back on there, and you're all done. Take all your tools off the engine bay, fender cover to protect your paint from brake fluid. Take this little cover here, put it back in its holes, just drops like that. And this just goes in there like that. Just gotta get that 
straight and then bang the rest on there. And you're all done. Go take a test drive. This car was actually kind of braking a little more sluggish, not as effective braking power, so maybe uh, we'll notice a difference now. But thanks for watching, everybody. If you have any questions or comments, please leave them in the uh, you know, the area below. So thanks for watching everybody.